Um, Sarah here with James Coffee Company. Um, if you haven't met me before, I do our wholesale quality control um, production, bunch of back-end stuff for James Coffee. Today we're going to be talking about the Growler Works U-Keg. Um, this is a nitro cold brew keg. We're going to brew a batch of cold brew in it and then taste the results. This video is not sponsored by Growler Works, but we at James Coffee like to feature um, brewing equipment, items that we use at, on the bar and in our James at Home store. If you like this sort of content, hit that subscribe button, uh, give the video a like. Let's get into it. So the UK Growler here is actually um, an enclosed system where you can literally make your cold brew in it and actually just pour your cold brew out of it at the end. So what we're going to start with today is we're actually going to use um, their recipe for cold brew um, on this growler. Their recipe is actually the same ratio that we cut our cold brew down into. So when we brew cold brew at James, we brew it at a five to one ratio, meaning five parts water, one part coffee. That makes a cold brew concentrate. We then cut that concentrate down 50-50, so you end up with a 10 to one ratio. Instead of brewing it that way, um, today in this keg, we're actually gonna brew it at drinking ratio, which is 10 to one. These kegs have a little fill line inside of them. It's a little bit hard to see, um, even with the camera, um, but when you kind of peek in there, it has a little line that says brew, and that's your 1.2 liter line. So for a 1.2 liter batch of cold brew, we're gonna use 120 grams of ground coffee. Today, we're gonna be using our Honduras again. I just really like it and wanted to try it on nitro, so we're gonna see how it tastes. For your grind size, we're gonna look for a coarse grind for this, and we're gonna measure out 120 grams. This growler comes with Alto filters for your cold brew, so you're gonna need some kind of filtration whenever you make cold brew, um, whether you're using a French press or you're just dumping grounds in water, you're gonna need some type of filter. Um, they use Alto filters. Um, these are Alto's like home cold brew filters. These I think, I think are the biggest size they make, but it actually comes with four filters when you buy it. Um, which is kind of a nice little setup to get you started. Four filters will actually make you two full batches. We're gonna be doing 120 grams of coffee in here, so it's gonna be 60 grams per filter. You can't really stuff these that full. I'm just gonna measure out my coffee. All right, so I'm just measuring out 60 grams of coffee here. The growler comes with this nice little funnel um, that's actually made for using with the filters. It makes your life way easier. Trying to get 60 grams into this skinny, tall filter is really difficult. And you just take that funnel and pour your coffee right into the filter. Once your coffee's in the filter, go ahead and cinch the bag closed. And then I go ahead and take it out. You wanna tie a knot. Instead of tying a knot in this top part of the filter, actually just take these strings and wrap them around here and tie a little quick knot rather than bunch it up too much. When you make cold brew, um, whatever filter you do put it in, if you use a filter bag like this, make sure you have a little bit of room in the top of the filter. This makes it so that the water and coffee can like move around and actually like extract together and there's no, not gonna be any like dry spots in the filter. So once that guy's full, just plop them in there. Then we're gonna do one more, the second one, um, so that we can fit all the coffee in there. All right, so second one, 60 grams more. So we have that total of 120 and then just drop them right in the growler. If you wanna get really nerdy and weigh your water, you totally can. It's 1.2 liters, which in grams is 1,200 grams. So um, it's really easy to translate. So you can just either measure out 1.2 liters visually in a bucket, you can weigh it, or you can just go ahead and pour up to that brew line. I've got my clean filtered water here. Um, when you do make cold brew, um, try and use filtered water, try not to use tap water. Um, this is all that we use in the shop, so it's reverse osmosis, it's a little bit better. If you buy water for coffee, spring water is good, any like filtered water. So you can kind of see the line. This is the only like maybe thing I don't love, is the line is kind of hard to see, but you can see it. So it might be um, something you want to measure your water out. So I've hit that 1.2 liters there. And now all you really have to do is take this little top and stick it in there. What's actually kind of nice about this, the coffee filter bags kind of want to float in the keg. This actually forces them to push down because it shoves them down. I don't know that that was an intentional design, but it totally works that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and screw this all the way on. And then just for good measure to make sure everything gets wet, I'm going to kind of tip the keg around. I don't know that they tell you to do this. I just want to make sure that like all the coffee really gets like saturated in there. From here, this guy um, then just sits for 20 hours, 24 hours, 18 hours. It just depends like how you want your coffee to taste. The longer, the more extraction you're gonna get out of it. You can definitely over extract though, so don't go too long. 
Um, but in general, this is just going to sit at room temperature for anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. It's pretty average for a room temperature brew. If you wanted to do a refrigerated brew, you'd be like doubling that time. So like maybe 48 hours in a refrigerator. Okay, so that we can try this, we're just going to flash forward 24 hours. And there we go. This is our cold brew. So this cold brew um, is been sitting now for the proper amount of time. This one actually went for 20 hours. I'm going to pull the bags out um, and then we're going to nitro this coffee and taste it together. Okay, so now we're just gonna pull the coffee bags out of here. I recommend having like kind of a long spoon, maybe even like tongs. Um, it's not really right at the top, so getting them out might be a little bit of a trick. So just take one at a time. I kind of like to actually let them hang for just a second so you get some of the liquid out of there. Pull your cold brew bags out. Once they're out, now we're ready to actually add the nitro to this guy. On this lid, it has this little chute set up for you. Um, this guy comes with two nitro capsules. Um, the company themselves sells the nitro capsules separately as little kits. So you can definitely buy from them. I'm sure you can also find little nitrogen capsules many places. But they give you two, so you can make two batches off the bat. When you're going to add your nitrogen to here, make sure that your lid is actually has the screw all the way to the off button and not on the infuse. Um, if it's on the infused, nitrogen will start pouring out of your tap. What you're going to do is pop this in here, make sure this is totally off, and just turn this. You'll hear it crack, but it shouldn't actually, it should just pop a little. If it's actually running, you just need to twist this until it's off. It shouldn't actually be shooting any nitrogen out at all. So from here, I'm just going to take this guy, close it down on him, and then at this point, the little top here, has where you can actually push to infuse. So you're gonna turn this screw and this you'll hear the nitrogen start to flow. Once it's on infuse, um, the nitrogen's actually pushing through the keg now. Um, but what we wanna do is actually give it a good shake so the nitrogen and coffee can kind of like mix in together really well. So just give it a good little shake. Um, you can also set it in a like in the fridge will help it kind of infuse too. Um, but just shaking it should really get you a good level. When it's on infuse, it's actually pushing more gas out. When you turn it to pour, it's just pressurizing. And then when you bring it all the way down, it takes the pressure off of it. So as long as it's on fuse, it's pushing a lot of gas out. So it's shaking it really good. <laughs> Once you felt like you've shook it really good, go ahead and <laughs> turn it from infuse over to pour. And now you should be able to actually pour some nitro cold brew. Oh, that looks like nitro. And that's it. There's your nitro cold brew. So you can see it's kind of all really, really light colored right now. That's actually all the gas in the coffee. Um, as it sits, it'll um, turn into kind of like a head, like a beer would have on it. In the end, it should be a pretty nice coffee. Um, this is our Honduras. It's a lighter roast than I would maybe normally do for um, a cold brew. So it might be a little bit too mellow, but we'll see. I, I generally would recommend for something like this with nitro, I'd recommend like a darker roast, like maybe something more medium like our shop blend or like the night owl even. So if nitro coffee is your thing, this is super fun. It comes with pretty much everything you need. You definitely need something to get your filters out of there. It's not the easiest to like reach in there because it's kind of a very small opening. But other than that, it really does come with everything that you need. Um, what, I, what are we doing today? What is this? Because I like the Honduras. Yeah. Decided that I was just gonna do Honduras. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit on the lighter end. Okay. Um, but I think it still tastes pretty nice. Like you can still get like some of the Honduras. And then what's this contraption? This is. I know you've already walked through, but you <laughs> walk me through. Um, this is Growler Works' U keg. So yeah. it's a little nitrogen keg. Yeah. Um, lets you make cold brew in a keg and oh. put put nitro on it. There you go. So it gives you kind of like a creamier body. Um, smooths everything out. So um, kind of like cold brew. Uh, nitro cold brew at home. Nitro cold brew at home, yeah, exactly. I like it. It's just super approachable. It's easy to drink. You can pound that whole cup. It's probably yeah, it's really approachable. It's probably actually dangerous. Yeah. Because it's so easy to drink. If it was like biting cold, I would probably just like, inhale a little bit. Thanks for joining us. Whoa. <laughs> Final thoughts on the UKEG's um, nitro system. It's super fun. Um, it's a really approachable way to have nitro cold brew in your home. As far as like just a cold brew making device, it's actually really easy to make cold brew on. It's really simple, simplifies everything. Cold brew is simple as it is, so it's something you could do without it, but you definitely can't do nitro without something like this. So if nitro is your thing and you like that like smoother, like creamy bodied, like really like just approachable coffee, it's a nice way to make cold brew.
is a trick. Pull your cold bags out. Pull your cold brew bags out. You'll actually hear it like crack the castle. There it is. How am I supposed to happen? Let's redo that. Let's do that again. Good job. Don't touch nitrogen. All right, well. Don't do that. Um, once you felt like you've shaked it, shaken it, I threw my mask in the water. No. No. Gee. Do we have masks? I dropped it in the water. I dropped it. I dropped it in the water. Can I have it? Can I please? Oh. <laughs>